Hi film friends, today is the day that you'll learn about large format photography. I have a few friends here to help me out in this video. We have David Emmanuel, Kobe and Min and we are going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to approach this beast of a camera. This is my, this is my, this is my Korean barbecue receipt. <laughs> How do you put it inside? Safe ma! So David sacrificed some film to show us how to load. It's not sacrifice uh. it's, it's I accidentally opened it in the light lah. <laughs> so step one, you have to start by loading the film. So unlike medium format and 35mm, there is no film canisters or rolls. The film comes in sheets and you will have to load it in a film holder like this. One film holder typically holds two sheets front and back and that means two shots. So how do you load? First of all, either do it in a dark room or a dark bed. The film sheet, once exposed to light, is completely gone. So learn from David's mistake and don't waste money on precious film by ruining it this way. Ensure that the emulsion side is facing up and you do so by making sure the notch is on the right side. Next, you pull out the dark slide and you insert the film in the holder. Make sure that the film is properly placed and then slide it in and close the dark slide. Do not touch the film surface with your fingers as it might damage the film. So here's how it should look like when you're loading it in a dark bag. Obviously, you shouldn't be able to see anything. That's why usually you want to do it at home so you can take your time in doing so before you go out to shoot. Step 2. Setting up the camera. Once you have the film loaded, it's time to set up the camera. This really depends on how your camera is built, but each camera will have bellows which you will have to extend out and the lens that you would have to attach to the camera. Now you have to figure out how to shape the large viewfinder at the back. So that viewfinder is actually how your film will be exposed as well. So we'll cover more on that later. And to do so, you can use an old t-shirt or a large cloth. Or if your camera already has a hood, simply set that up. Lastly, you'll need the shutter release. All these are separate components, so make sure you don't miss out anything. Step 3. Framing and posing. Set up your model and your camera angle. And this should not be too hard for you since it's pretty much the same in any photography. The only difference here is your model has to stay at that one spot without moving much while you do the rest of your steps. So make sure they are in a nice and comfortable position. Step 4. Focusing. Because each photo is so expensive to capture, you need to make sure that each frame is fully in focus. There isn't a rangefinder or split prism to assist you here, so you need to use a lupe. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, which is a magnifying glass of sorts. Hold it to the spot you want focus and then turn the knobs in your camera to make sure it is sharp. If the viewfinder isn't bright enough, it's likely that your aperture isn't at its widest. Open it all the way and then try again. Yeah, don't move, don't move, stop moving, stop moving! Hey, my leg is <laughs> Maintain, maintain! Okay. Step 5. Aperture and shutter speed. What you need here is a light meter. So take the light reading and then adjust the settings accordingly. Again, there's no built-in light meter to help you out here. So you have to use an external light meter. And since your aperture needs to be at its widest to focus, once you've done this, it will be harder to go back and refocus. So make sure your subject is still at the same spot. Step 6. One last check. One final check before you load the film and things go into the point of no return. So make sure your shutter speed and aperture is at the right setting. Cock the shutter and do a test fire. Is your subject still in the same spot and in focus? Make sure that they're still there, otherwise it's gonna be out of focus. Are the light conditions still the same? If they're not, then you're gonna have to reset your shutter speed and aperture. So if everything is okay, then proceed to the next step. And that is step 7, putting the film in. Once you have placed your film in, you won't be able to look at your viewfinder again. How the film is going to be exposed in the camera is using that same surface. So your film will be covering it. That's why you have to make sure that everything is okay before you put your film in. 
Putting the film in is as easy as just slotting it in. Finally, we've reached this point, the point that you've been waiting for. Step 8. Taking the photo. At this point, make sure that your model is not too annoyed with you because you have been taking a very long time doing all the other steps. Remove the dark slide and then fire the shutter. So that's done, but you're not completely done yet. Don't forget to replace the dark slide. So usually what we do is you can turn the dark slide to the other side because um, at the handle, they'll have two different colors that would serve as an indication to which films have been shot. And once you've repeated these steps multiple times and you've shot all the film that you've brought up, it's time to disassemble the camera. So same as how you've assembled it but backwards. Uh, remove the lens and shutter cable, push the bellows back in and close it up and now you're done. So remember the steps? Okay, we've come to the end of this video. For those who have stayed till the end, thank you so much for watching. A huge thank you to my friends, David, Emmanuel, Kobe and Min who took part in this video. I hope you guys learned more about large format photography and please let me know in the comments below what other videos you'd like to see from us. Remember to like this video and subscribe. That really helps us a lot. Until the next one, bye!